Carolyn Hamlet is our guest on Extract Radio. Carolyn, are you there? Yes. Thank you so much, X. Good evening, Carolyn. Thank you so much. There wouldn't be a, you, we would, there wouldn't be a Carolyn tonight if you didn't decide to come on. And I, and I really, really cannot thank you uh, as far as your courage endorsing this. Um, I, I really have no words other than that. Thank you for being here tonight with us, Carolyn. Yeah, I appreciate your um, your support in that and helping me feel comfortable with this because none of this is easy to talk about, really. <laughs> I, I, I could imagine. I, I really could. Uh, I I don't come from the life that you had, so I don't uh, I don't have any words about that. So I don't want to be mundane, nor do I want to be boring for yourself or the audience listening. Carolyn, you have a fantastic, uh, uneasy life story. I know we can't do it in fifty seven and a half minutes, but we're going to try to tackle the, the important pieces that you find or relevant pieces, should I say, that you find um, in this story. Carolyn, how are you related, whether bloodline, uh, initiation into this elite organization that is known throughout the world, the Illuminati? Well, I'm not sure how far back it goes. Uh, my family came from Europe. I have uh, my genealogy has been done by a couple of family members. And in that, I have seen some interesting names, and I am aware of the fact that a lot of, well, not a lot, but a number of well-known people in the United States history are my ancestors. Um, some of the, the names that you might recognize are Andrew Jackson, Jefferson Davis. There's James Collinsworth, who is famous in, in the Texas history. Uh, the first Masonic funeral ever held in Texas was uh, for James Collinsworth. Uh, a lot of my family line is they were top Freemasons. Not all of them. I'm not sure if they were strictly, you know, like the pure Illuminati bloodlines. They're mm -hmm. like offshoots. If anybody wants to look at my genealogy, they're welcome to tell me what I am. <laughs> I was uh, told, okay, I was told what I was. But uh, they didn't use the term Illuminati. But they, they what did they, they use, they Carol? Use the term Illuminati. They, Illumina. they, it was Illumined ones, which was they looked at that as even above what people consider Illuminati. Uh, while okay. I'm on the topic of some of the names, uh, some people uh, recognize names such as Brown or Ferguson, Dixon, uh, Dickinson. There's, of course, like Davis, Drake. There's uh, Stanford. Uh, Robertson's another name. Um, some of my family members married into the Franklin family, the Bushes, the Windsors. Um, so the names you're giving us now, are they all names that you uh, remember, per se, on a uh, physical, visual basis, or are these just names that you know of? Um, names that I – they're, they're my, my ancestors. The okay. closer ones would be – have married into Franklin's, Bushes, and Windsors. And, okay. Uh, Robertson, uh, it, it's, as the family line got closer to me, fewer people were working directly with the government, although my uncle was uh, asked to work with, with uh, President Truman to work directly with him. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what that was about. I was not told, and in my family, you don't ask questions. If you were told that, it, it, was, it, was, even, it was strange that I was even told that. So tell, tell me this, Carolyn, what I believe the Extract Radio audience would love to know, myself included. At what age did someone or someone, whether it be your mother who was uh, heavily into this, if I'm mistaken, your father, your handlers, who were your handlers exactly? And at what age did they grab you and say, this is what you're going to do, and how exactly did they do it? Well, when I was... A um, couple of years old, well, first of all, at birth, I could see things in the physical realm that most people couldn't see. I could, yeah, I could see into the, the spirit realm, and I also had, like, clairvoyant abilities. Maybe all babies do. I don't know, but I never lost mine. And um, I was able to see angelic beings. In fact, the very first time I ever prayed was because a real angel came and uh, told me to pray. Uh, that happened very early on in my life, which was actually godsend, literally, <laughs> because that kept my mind uh, toward, uh, centered in on him, a heavenly father, because that's how he was presented. He presented himself to me as a heavenly father. Nobody told me that 
there was a heavenly father, but that is how I met um, when I when I said my first prayer. That is the presence that came to me and revealed himself as a heavenly father and kept me through everything I've been through my life, led me through everything through the organization and out of the organization. So just, now that I've got that out of the way, I'll, I will, I'll say that when I was, uh, since my mother was already working with some ascended masters since the time she was 16 years old, she uh, had them um, giving her directions on how to raise me, just as they were giving me directions on how to raise my own sons. So um, they... I had I had my mentors that were in the body and out of the body. Now my the mentors that wrote the children's books for or the children's teaching material for Lucius Trust had me learning through their meditation techniques at probably around four years old, if not early, mm. or not, if not earlier than that. So wow. my mother had was training me. And she she knew my ability, so she also was taking instructions on how to help me uh, progress in my uh, clairvoyant abilities because she knew that it, she needed to do that before the age of seven because if you the, if you can train a child before the age of seven then you pretty well have it have it done you have it set for them yeah I would imagine so now when you say train Carolyn uh, I've I've written a blog on a TV show called The Event, and I remember specifically how they take little children, and they had them in this underground base. That's why I always say how the Illuminati tell us what they're going to do. What's frightening here is that what you're about to tell people is exactly what I saw on The Event 30-plus years later, which is now on NBC. Tell us how they came and took you. What did they do? Where did they take you? That's funny because I just started watching the the event, but I haven't gotten to that part, which is probably good. It might freak me out. <laughs> okay, it probably uh, will. What yeah. I remember, I always I re Oh man, thanks for the warning. <laughs> um, I remember always remembered being taken as a very very young child in the middle of the night by the very same two men. Um, what do they look like? What do they look like? Well, it's it's funny. I think I knew who they were. At least one of them. And I'm not going to say who they are on the on the program, okay. but um, one of them had a bodysuit on that was. I think this is the one that I would have recognized if he had not had a like a bodysuit on. I I might have known who he was. I couldn't see his face, but I, I could see his his uh, build and kind of his features. I think I knew who that was. And the other one was just a, a regular normal looking person same two people. They would take me, first of all, when they would take me out of the house, they would drug me. And I can remember they would bring me back just before dawn. I would have nightmares as to what went on during that time, and it started, the full memories began to resurface a, a couple years ago. But uh, the flashbacks that I used to have, and then when the full memories came to me, um, it, it, there, it was an underground facility. That was one place. There were other places, but one was the underground facility, which I believe is McDill Air Force Base. And I lived not that far from McDill, McDill Air Force Base. It could have taken me by car, plane, um, or boat. I mean, we had an well, airport. What, 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 what was there, Carolyn? Were there other children? Yeah, there? There... They had cages. They had cages. You know, like the old kind of zoo cages? Yeah. Like the thick, thick ugly-looking black bars? There were kids in cages. What were they doing? What, what, what were they, they doing? Were, I, they were, well, they were, the kids were very, very afraid. They used the kids for experiments. They, there were sexual things going on there. The kids were, I knew they were taken from their homes. Some of them lived there. They never left. They were the same kids there every time I went. They had pleading eyes like, please, you know, tell somebody I'm here. And I'd have nightmares that, I should tell someone about them, but when I'd wake up, I'd, I'd, it, the nightmare would fade. I was afraid to tell about them because I would be in trouble. And some of the, there were other children like me that would just be taken there for experiments or for tra for uh, mind control programming, and we would be taken home. And part of that programming also involved they, they'd have to take us to uh, points of 
of death and bringing us back. Um, but that's what it, uh, kind of another story. Uh, yeah, I, I, I take that, Carolyn. What exactly did they program you children? Now, you're three, four years old, two, three, four years old here. What exactly did they program you to do? Well, one thing that – one memory I had is they were using other children to teach other children, showing that it's okay, uh, making them think that it's normal to have, like, like sexual relations with, with older men. That was one of the things. And had us playing with dolls to make us think that it was normal. Mm-hmm. And if we, if we acted like it wasn't normal, then we would be punished for it. And um, that's that's one of the things. Other things, they there were there was torturing of animals. There was skinning dogs alive. There was anything to threaten us and intimidate us, or to numb us to, so that possibly we may want to do that to somebody else. And your mother knew that this was ongoing no. with yourself. She did no. not. No, she did not. And that's a whole other story that people can get into if they want to research other people's stories as to how that can happen. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Then let's continue with your story. Let's progress. Let's fast forward a little bit here in the teenagehood and your 20s and whatnot. And as you got, as you got older from this, your first memories as a child, what exactly did they tell you about this group and who, their, who the leader was, your ascended masters, that is? What exactly did they have you do and program you to believe I always believed, okay, it was not until the very end that I be, I always believed they were of God, that we were highly evolved spiritual beings that were um, on earth to help hum- humanity progress spiritually and that we were of a special bloodline physically and that originally we didn't even come from earth, that we weren't even human. So... Um, I had that totally ingrained in me, and I had no reason not to believe that, but with the heart that I had, which was one that I loved God, I wanted to help mankind. So they used that to get me to to work for them. As long as I thought I was doing good, I was a good worker. Now, if I had a devious heart, maybe I would have been on the other side of the organization, which is um, more satanic. I mean outright dark the dark arts I wouldn't I didn't fit into that group so um, it was not up until it was up until the time when I was getting ready to leave not I was the time I left the organization was probably 1985 I was involved in the what they were doing for the last section of this plan of bringing in they called the Christ which is actually the Antichrist I didn't know that until they showed me. Uh, well, well, how, how do you, uh, what do you mean how, until they? <laughs> what do you mean until they showed you? How, how exactly did they show you this, Carolyn? Well, first of all, they told me I was going to be a Judas to the group. That's what they they said I was going to speak out against them before millions of people and tell them a, tell about the plan. I could not understand how in the world I'd ever do such a thing like that. So, um, as as a little bit of time went on, I realized <laughs> um, I realized what they meant by that because they, they didn't want me to leave the plan. They tried very hard to um, very careful with their teaching with me because they they said they knew that they would lose me if they took me too fast. But it got into the higher Luciferic teachings. There's all different types of Luciferic teachings, different different levels. And on one level, they make Lucifer the hero, the, uh, the the savior. A lot of people are stuck on that level. And another level, you get to the point where they want you to know who Lucifer is, and they want you to worship him and love him. And when I got to the position where they needed me to know what I was dealing with, I was involved in bringing uh, beings from another realm here that were um, of Lucifer's hierarchy. I didn't know him as Lucifer at that time, but uh, the, like the, the top ascended masters. Well, you actually, you actually met this, this, this entity as Lucifer in a physical format? Well, 
I, I, I saw two, I've seen three entities. Uh, one that they brought in that they said was going to be, well, that I helped bring in, they said he was to be the one to be priced, which is actually, they, it's kind of hard to explain. Some people probably understand what I'm talking about. Um, when I mention avatar, it's, a, it's actually a possession that takes place of a human being. So, so they brought in the being who was not with this avatar as of yet. Yeah, but had been chosen for that. He was not the highest ranking um, one in Lucifer's hierarchy. What did he look like? He, um, he was very handsome. They're all very handsome. He looked like kind of Mediterranean looking. He had um, kind of grayish, bluish eyes. Um, he would appear to be at that at that time. It would have been probably looks around in his early thirties, mm -hmm. and he likes to he wow. likes to look like that. He chose the way he would look. And he, his birth date, interesting enough, I looked at it, it is like an occult date. It was October 11th, and I think it was in 84. So those were kind of occult dates, too. I didn't recognize it at the time, but I looked back later, and uh, and uh, that's that's an interesting date. But that's, what, that's one being. Okay, and the, these beings, uh, what, what happened to them? How come they're not on the world stage as of now to take over for this this this? Christ, anti, excuse, excuse me, anti-Christ uh, scenario? That's a good question. I, I don't know. Some of them may be just influencing others. Some of them, um, the plan was that they originally were going to be walk-ins, that they were going to, okay, I'm telling a story as they told me. It mm -hmm. could be, a, this part could be a lie. What I was told was that they were, originally they were going to work through human beings, be walk-ins, like possessing them. And then they changed their mind. They wanted to possess their own bodies. So when I left the organization, we were actually creating physical bodies for these beings to, to walk around in so that they could manifest themselves on this physical plane for longer periods of time and that they could uh, transport themselves with, without, um, you know, without jets. I can't even remember the term for that. But um, so I don't, I don't know if, this person is going to show up, and I don't know how that's going to work, but I, I think the important point is what's the most real thing that ever happened to me in all this that, that is the turning point for me is that I had to stand face to face with a being that they called the most illumined of all. If anybody on the face of this earth experienced what I did, <laughs> They would have no doubt whatsoever that there is an antichrist. Well, tell me about that. Tell me a story. Your face-to-face -face encounter with this antichrist. Okay, this was a light. This was a being that was stories and stories tall. He was just brilliantly white light. He was uh, just the presence of him was of complete love and beauty and just everything wonderful. I felt like it was Jesus Christ. I didn't know that I knew who Jesus Christ was. It's like it was in my heart that I recognized, and this being was even more, um, more of what a human being could imagine in their mind what Jesus Christ would be. If you're familiar with Jesus Christ in the Bible, if you really center on his words, and listen to them, and they become a part of you, this being actually emanates all that equally. But if you don't know, you had to show me Jesus was real so that I would see that they have an antichrist, that that's their Christ, the one the, um, the United Nations is trying to set up as the global rule. Wow. Am I still on air? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to take all this in here. The United Nations is trying to set up this this Antichrist. That is correct. That has been uh, very, very well researched. I'm curious. I, I got to know, Carolyn, uh, what what did the organization teach you uh, of Jesus Christ in comparison to Lucifer? How are you illuminated ones? What excuse me? What are you illuminated ones taught of Jesus Christ? What do they say about him? 
it depends on, there's so many different teachings on the different levels. There, okay, one of the, one of the main teachings is that Jesus, that Jesus and the Christ are two separate things. That Jesus was a man and that he gave up, he became like a walk-in, got possessed, so to speak, by a higher, a highly, more higher evolved being called, well, 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 they call him an avatar. That avatar took control of Jesus the man's body for the three-year ministry. And Jesus died on the cross, they say, and the avatar left before that time. So they say Jesus Christ, or Jesus earned his mastership for the ascended masters to allow that Christ for that age to use the body of Jesus. Now, interesting enough, people don't pay attention to Jesus Christ. You would think that if he's an ascended master, oh, yeah, you should read the words of Jesus in the Bible. Do they teach that? No. They try to get you away from who he is. Yeah. So as then they don't want you to, they don't teach you about Jesus. They try, they want you to ignore Jesus. But when you get to the top levels, in order for you to know who Lucifer is, you have to know who Jesus is. They want you to know so that you can, you can uh, bow to Lucifer. Yeah. Uh, because Lucifer is against, against God. Of course. He's the, crea he's the created. Um. Let's put that aside for now, Carolyn. What, what would, it's been it's been very well researched and documented. As, as people who listen to the show know, that I am uh, huge. I've been researching the Illuminati for many years. It's what started me to do this program, uh, and the Freemasons as well. Excuse me, uh, Illuminati people, members of the established order, have infiltrated levels of government, finance, politics, schools. How do these members infiltrate all these organizations? <laughs> it's been going on for a lot of years. Well, I can give yeah. you one instance. My Please. my mother, okay, my mother did, she worked, gosh, it's like an everyday living. Let's, let's put it in the way of like a Christian. They're evangelizing. They evangelize when they go to the grocery store. They evangelize when they go to the doctor. They... Uh, evangelize when they go vote it's whatever they do it's if that's what what they have their allegiance to that's what they do that's on their mind and they'll they'll put a plug or a seed here and there and that's that's what people in the organization do they may be on a very a low level a lower level they may think there are like the highest level of understanding but in that level of understanding they will try to plug what they know is being the truth so my mom was involved in education. She was a teacher for about a year. She plugged that, some of that information into her sixth grade classroom. I did with all of my friends. Uh, we, we infiltrated churches. We were sent to various churches to do just that, infiltrate. And uh, now, well, sometimes we... Hmm? Carolyn? Uh, no, I, yeah. I was going to say, when you say infiltrate, how exactly did you infiltrate churches? What was your role? What did you do exactly? Well, it depended on the church, and it depended on if we were sent to uh, after a specific person. Um, my mother was sent after a pastor, and she actually telepathically dictated a uh, sermon to this pastor. But that was after she and uh, some of her group physical members had been working on this pastor, you know, putting little seeds here and there in, in his mind and um, making suggestive statements, not, you know, in sexually, but in, in uh, scriptural suggestive statements till finally he was open to the idea that maybe he could telepathically receive a sermon. Um, that's another, that's a story I won't go into now, but I've, I have, I've written it and it's, it's on my blog. Something I'll be updating later is my blog. Um, I was sent in to um, after a couple after some priests in a Catholic church, and um, I was sent in with a, several other people into a charismatic church before. And what we would do is tr we would pick pick out people who were sensitive to some of our teachings and just lead them astray. We didn't consider them leading, it ast leading them astray. We were considering giving them an opportunity to progress spiritually. 
-hmm. Now, my my uh, mentor knew what we were doing. There that we weren't trying to. It, okay, the mentors know that it's not the it's not they're not an, that you're not offering the opportunity. They're actually collecting servants to do their bidding. But we okay. present it. We would be presenting it as, as hey, you you're gifted. Come join us. And by and and if you want to stay in the church, God wants you in the church. Why don't you affect other people with this doctrine? You know, you're too good for this this lower class um, doctrine that sticks straight to the to what Jesus teaches. Let's show you the higher levels. Okay. Um... Let's 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 get into exactly the Illuminati, the illuminated ones. How exactly? What is their end game, Carolyn? What what is their goal with humanity? What are they trying to do here on Earth? Well, the uh, the physical members. I think it probably varies according to the members. Um. I don't know personally, I don't think I know personally any any of the top members. Most of those people at the top levels do worship Lucifer. It's so I would assume that they're caught up in any of the the evils that Lucifer is about, and they thrive on that, which is the power. <laughs> mm -hmm. They think they're better than everybody else. They're deceived by that. They, they they totally believe that, and they totally believe other everybody's scum under their feet. Yeah. Yeah. So the, why would they care? They just they they want to see them crushed. Then there's the level up below that that there's people that actually care for others. Mm -hmm. That that they they still think that they're helping others by by uh, leading them toward that that new world order. And speaking of New World Order, let's get into Bush Sr. and Jr. in the Bush family. Uh, tell me what you know about them. I know that uh, they are extensively, hugely, huge involvement in this uh, organization. Tell me what uh, you know about the Bush family. I know that when I was four years old, I was told that there would be a man that the organization was going to choose that was going to give a speech and start introducing some of our our esoteric words. They called it making it exoteric. And I don't have time to go into it right now what all that means about okay. what this particular person what was all involved in this particular speech. But I waited my entire life. Okay, first of all I was told it was going to be toward the end of this century and it was going to mark a launching into the from the uh, the plan, what they call the plan for the New World Order, to the uh, above ground to start working more blatantly before people and using some more mind control techniques to the masses. Well, that speech was George W. Bush Sr. He gave the speech September 11th, 1990. The organization loves their numbers. They, they love 11s and they love 9s. And uh, he introduced uh, several of the words that were esoteric, and my ears perked up right away and knew exactly what that meant. Then on, um, on huh. March 6, 1991, mm -hmm. he gave another speech. It was a speech to Congress, and he mentioned the New World Order several times. And March is the third month, and then we have the sixth day. So we have another nine, six plus three, nine. So we have another nine plus 1991. They like those numbers. Yeah, numerology is huge with these uh, weirdos out there. Yeah, really huge. So uh, right off the top of my head, that's the main part that I know know about them. I know that they used uh, they were planning to use George Bush the the junior for at, on the Christian level to say that he's Christian to get the Christians to start following him. Yeah, so that they can. That was a some of the beginning of the manipulation of the Christian Church. Yeah, he's a he's a uh, real he's a real winner. Would they picked in uh, Bush Jr. Yeah. a real I lost winner? Some friends, 
I definitely lost some friends over that. Interesting thing is that I, I knew the signs. I knew when this was coming. I actually told people that George, that, uh, that George Jr. was going to win that election and actually selection, and I told them exactly what to expect during that, that administration. I lost friends over that, and then I lost fr Christian friends over, over me trying to remind them of his background. Mm -hmm. So they've played on that ever since, and I'm writing an article now to try to show show those stages of of how Christians have been manipulated. Yeah, I can I can imagine so. How it, it's 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 something that's going to continue to probably happen, Carolyn. I think you'll agree with me on that. Speaking of being manipulated, where are your masters, your handlers now? You've been out of the organization for X amount of years. Where are they now? Have they tried getting in contact with you again? How does that work? Well, um, of course, my mother died when I was 17. Um, the two physical mentors that worked with Lucius Trust Publishing Company are gone to their reward, whatever that is. And the other one, the other physical mentor I had in my adult life, I don't know. It's, and I hope I never see that person ever again in my entire life. One person from, the, from that group has tried to contact me since then, says they're out. I don't want to talk to that person or see that person. So um, as for the physical, the, the other masters, occasionally somebody, uh, they'll try to contact me telepathically. Or, what do they uh, what what do they say to you uh, telepathically? What do they say to you, Carolyn? Uh, we watch you back. Well, come. <laughs> well, they've done. They've tried. They've tried like offers, like don't you miss us? <laughs> you know, <laughs> just funny stuff. You know, trying to show like their good side. Don't you miss oh. us? Hey, we could sure use you. And and then sometimes it's it's a threat. Um, the last threat. I got was actually from the Master Dua Kowell, Master DK, the one they called the Tibetan. Um, none of these guys are benevolent as they as they claim. Well, that that's what definitely isn't. Well, that, that's what I I've had a hard time understanding. Defectors, in the sense of, um, they they preach one thing, but let's talk about you walking. How do they just allow you to walk away from something like that? I I, I would have the in my research, it's been hard for me to understand the psyche and the psychology behind these so-called masters that they were just the repercussions of walking away. Well, what were they your repercussions? Have, okay, they don't have a choice, and they know it. And um, that's what made the master DK so angry is because I told them, I said, there's not a thing you can do about it if I'm ever going to talk out about about you guys. And I mean, he's fuming. He was fuming why I try to stay as close as possible to God. Because I know that if I don't, they can get me. If there's a weakness, they can get me. If I if I decide I want to drink alcohol, okay. If you've been in the occult, and weaknesses are intensified. Mm -hmm. So what they can do is they they will use demonic a demonic type attachments or pressures to to try to get you to to weaken in your weak areas. If it's anger, it could be anger. They they try to destroy one through that way. They try to create nightmares. Um, so I'm constantly um, trying to put on the armor, the full armor of God. I'm constantly talking to my Heavenly Father. Um, are you going to say something? No, no, I'm listening. I, I just, I, no, please. Continue. I've had physical demonic attacks where they've tried to beat me up. They've, uh, they used to have that all the time, but um, since I learned to use the name of Jesus, even sleep paralysis, or I can all this, I have had paralysis where I'm wide awake, where I can't move, and in my mind I'll think, in the name of Jesus, and the thing will leave. It works for me. I don't know if it'll work for everybody. I understand. I, I respect that. Um, I've had, have you? Yeah. Have you um, been? Physical, go ahead. No. Okay, have you been followed? Have you been? Um, in, in any way physically uh, threatened, uh, bombs, anything. We've heard so yeah. many stories. Please tell yeah. us exactly Actually, how. I've had, I've had my, my life threatened and my family's life threatened a number of times. Um, I have had a, my car, which SUV, just it didn't blow up right away. It caught on fire just moments after I got out of it. Fire department couldn't put the fire out, and they asked me if I was – if. Uh, I knew if anybody wanted to kill me because they found it was arson. Um, I've 
Um, what else? I can't think right now. Well, let's see, tell me this, Carolyn. What made you come on Extract Radio tonight with me, X, and tell people who are listening right now, uh, I've said it before the show, that I believe your story. And I'm going to get into, before the end of the show, the other defectors who are out there, uh, some who are a crock of shit, in my opinion, some who are real. And I want to get your take on that. But how do you, uh, if anyone from the Illuminati who knows who, who, just listening tonight, let's just say, what do you think they're saying about you? Well, I think they, some of them may wonder how much I really do remember knowing because a lot of, in the mind control, a lot of the, a lot of people who have been controlled don't remember the details and some of them never do, and they may wonder, what does she know? What does she remember? Not everybody in the organization is aware of what other people know. So um, I'm not afraid, at least at this point. I feel, like, I feel God's protection. I feel like he wants me to speak out, and that's the reason I'm on tonight. I've kept silent for a number of years. I haven't felt like it was right to say anything. I've been on a few radio, radio programs before, I was on television many years ago. Um, is this is this is the right time to start telling some of my story? And one of the reasons I'm so concerned is that 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 people are being so deceived right now um, by well, I I guess I'm I'm the most concerned right now about a lot of the Christians. The Christians. Well, why specifically yeah. the Christians? Because a lot of them don't know. They call themselves Christians. Mm -hmm. And a Christian is somebody who puts to heart the teachings of Jesus Christ. Okay. And yet they've, they're have they putting man's doctrine ahead of what Jesus teaches. And I'm trying to get people to see, look at what Jesus teaches first. Take him into your heart or you'll never be able to tell what is not of Christ. What about people who don't believe in Jesus Christ? Religiously, religious groups, religious organizations or not, what's going to happen to them when this figure shows his place on this world? What do you think is going to happen to them, uh, Carolyn? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I can tell you that I know that anyone who has a heart like Jesus Christ whether they know it's him or not, if if they if they have that heart, that spiritual heart, they'll know the difference between what is of that true spiritual heart, that God, the the heavenly Father, the the uh, the God of Abraham. They'll know him, and they'll know the difference. And okay. I'm finding that there are a lot of people like that. They're they're very aware of what's going on in the world. Carolyn, where could people check out your blog? You have a blog site. Where could they go to? Is it uh, www.crhamlet at gmail.com for your email? That's that's the email. Okay. The blog is beyond the physical realm dot com. That's my blog spot. Mm -hmm. It's uh, I haven't put a much material there for a purpose, for a reason. Um, I'll probably start adding some. I've written a lot, but I haven't felt right about putting it out yet. Okay. Um, this is what you're hearing on this program tonight. Most of it I've never said before. <laughs> um, some humans have never heard it before. Uh, <laughs> wow. But Carolyn. It's given me the opportunity. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Carolyn, it's, it's been my pleasure. John Todd, other Illuminati defectors, some of uh, who have just plainly disappeared off this world. Uh, if you go on YouTube and type in Illuminati defectors, you'll get a guy named uh, Leo in Italy. You'll get this, I think her name was Sylvie, going by the name, the pseudonym named Sylvia. Henry Mako interviewed her. Uh, what do you take? Uh, what's your take, really, uh, really quickly on these people? Was John Todd uh, the real deal? Um, what? I don't know. Um, I've heard more what other people have said. I haven't spent a whole lot of time looking into other people because it kind of gives me the creeps. But uh, from what I did hear about John Todd, uh, the little bit I heard, I believe he's he's the real deal. And um, as for, I think it's, it, I heard somebody pronounce it. Um, 
Savvily, um, but everybody, you know, either Salvi. Way. Yeah, it's, Salvi. You know, the little Salvi. bit that I've heard, uh, the little bit I've, I don't think I've heard any programs with her. I've read some of her stuff, and I'd, I'd say that I, I line more up with agreeing or believing in her or that she's correct. Um, Kathy O'Brien's another one. I wonder, um, she mentions McDill Air Force Base. I mm. haven't read much of her stuff. Now, somebody somebody I've had more contact with is Lauren Stratford, and she's that was through Johanna Michelson. Johanna Michelson was very instrumental in helping me get out of what I was involved in um, with, with her book, The Beautiful Side of Evil, and uh, me speaking with her on the telephone uh, a number of times uh, with Johanna and her husband, uh, Randall. Yeah. But it was through Johanna who helped Lauren Stratford uh, get out of what she was in and help heal Hor Lauren Stratford. Um, that was through Johanna. Lauren was also able to help me. Yeah. I believe, absolutely believe Lauren's the, the real deal. And okay. It's a shame that people really, really will uh, condemn her uh, over that. And Lauren, uh, I understand, passed away. I think it was in uh, 2002. Yes, yes, she did. And I agree with you 100% on it. It is a shame that, uh, unfortunately, some people have to go in vain like that. Their work is uh, not believed. You are not going to be one of them, Carolyn. I really thank you very much for coming on the show. I admire the, your courage to do this. Um, I, I have no other words but saying that I do believe you. And I think this hour has been very, um, very educational for myself and the people listening to Extract Radio on how certain these operations work within the organization. I thank you for coming on here, Carolyn. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're very welcome. Carolyn Hamlin was our guest here on Extract Radio. Remarkable, courageous woman fighting the good fight, telling her side of the story. Uh, I believe to be true. I hope everyone enjoyed the program and her story. It's, uh, it makes you think, people. These people do really exist. Uh, and they're doing it right in plain sight. And they're doing it very, very very scary, very trickery per se, and they're deceiving mankind. And uh, it does it does happen, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm glad we had a very good guest tonight to explain that to everybody. <laughs>